Okay, this is the Christmas gnome card making. Um, this is really fun because if you uh, take a look at this paper, we have all these cute Christmassy gnomes. We have Santa gnomes and reindeer gnomes and decorating gnomes. Um, these have already been printed, colored, and designed for you to cut out and put on your cards. And so you can, instead of having to buy the stamp for each of these stamp and the ink pad and the paper and stamp them all, color them all, and you can skip those steps and go straight to die cutting them and then crafting with them. So these are perfectly designed to go with these stamps. Now, if you want to color them, you can get the stamp set too. But this, in this case, you can just only pick up the dies. And what I love about this um, brand is that when you purchase some of their die cuts, they will give you a bonus sheet of paper with these same characters on it that have not been colored. So you can color with them and it's nice quality paper. You can use Copic markers, alcohol based markers, or as well as watercolor, um, uh, color pencils, uh, whatever you want to use to color with crayons, whatever you want to use to color. So it's just a cute little bonus in your package. And then these die cuts, are ready to use for these characters. So I'm going to take the Rudolph one or the reindeer one right here. And I'm just going to lay it over so you can see how it works. See how it perfectly outlines the shape. And so you're going to put the bumpy side down. There's an edge on one side and it's perfectly smooth on the other side. So the edge side is what you put face down and you'll know that you have it right because otherwise the picture wouldn't fit right. We can see the candy canes over here on the left. If I were to put this on upside down, it would just, it wouldn't fit the puzzle. So it's easy to know that you have it right. And then you run it through your die cut machine. Now this die cut machine is so cute. This is the sidekick. It's a little baby die cut machine. Um, and you you get it's a whole little kit and with it you get some stamps and then little embossing folders and some die cuts and then you get two aqua colored cutting plates and you're also going to get this one and instructions all you need for this you can put everything else aside all that you're going to need is the two cutting plates and the machine itself and then for this particular set of cards we have um, a 20 pack of card makers choice cards and envelopes we did put um, white cards or envelopes in here um, so it's nice and easy for you to label and address and then the cards themselves these are very high quality they're pre-scored so we've got that line down the middle and some people ask what side should I use to fold you'll notice one side is an indent like this it's indented and one side is a bubble the bubble is the inside of the card and you'll know that it's you know that you have it right because it's easy to fold the other way you have to you have to force it it doesn't make a huge difference though because the finish on the on this particular paper is the same on either side and this is 100 pounds super thick high quality paper it's very professional very smooth and we thought the craft color is so fun for holiday it really um, brings out the brightness in the colors of this collection. So the collection we're using is Tula and Norbert's Christmas Party. So those are our two little gnomes. We've been following them all year through the summer and the spring. And um, this paper pack is just all about the party that they're having for holiday. So bright and colorful. We've got traditional colors and, and themes as well as um, some maybe untraditional with the pinks and the teals and the yellows. And then there's even some that, that celebrate ugly sweater. <laughs> Look at these ugly sweaters. They're actually super adorable. So this paper pad also includes several sheets like this one where you can cut apart different elements so you can have borders and, and key elements of, on your cards. And every single paper is double-sided. So you can use both sides. So if you don't like the ugly sweaters, look at how cute the back side is. So you can just use that side. Um, I'm gonna go through using all of these and we're going to make at least 10 cards. You have enough um, cards here for 20. And I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques. You can make the exact same cards as I do if you want to, or you can, uh, uh, once you get the hang of it, design your own. 
So in addition to these supplies, the other things you will need is a pair of scissors, okay? Uh, a paper trimmer would be ideal. You are gonna be cutting a lot of the paper up, all of the paper, we're gonna be cutting all this up. And this will just make your life a lot easier. It doesn't matter what brand or what size, as long as you, cause this is only six by six paper. So um, you can, uh, use whatever paper trimmer you want. If you don't have one, you're gonna and you, we're gonna have to cut some straight lines. So you're probably gonna have to get a ruler and a pencil, and you're gonna have to measure everything and line it up, and then use your scissors to trim. We the reason you, we have scissors here is because we're gonna hand cut a few things. And then um, the other thing you'll need is obviously is gonna be adhesive. Now your adhesive choices are up to you. You can use what you like. If you want a tape runner, that will work. Any kind of tape runner, these you just roll along like correction tape. It's very easy and no muss, no fuss. Downside, they're not they're not as sticky as other options. So um, the longevity of how long your paper is going to stick where you put it um, is compromised a little bit. So you probably have to use more. But refills are easy to get too. Another option would be liquid glue. Um, a little bit goes a long way. It's super strong holding. You have time to move it if you got it down a little bit crooked. Uh, uh, you have to be, you have to have some self-control. You don't want to put too much adhesive on there. This is the one that I like, Mono Multi Liquid Glue. It comes out white so you can see what you're doing, but it dries clear. It has two tips, either a broad tip, which I almost never use myself, and a, and a smaller tip. You can even put this glue into smaller applicator bottles if you really, if you're doing fine detail work. If you'd rather you could use a glue stick, this is a really great one to use. So this will work fine. If you have, um, if you like really strong holding tape, you don't want liquid or, or, or gel type tape, uh, score tape is fantastic. Uh, this one also works really, really well and very, very strong holding. For your strongest hold and most professional outcome, this is what I would use. Um, the least expensive. In the long run, this will be because you're going to use so little of it. That's what you need to have. In addition, a bonus to have would be some kind of foam dots or foam tape. This will just give you a little bit of dimension. Um, you can get these in strips and squares and circles and big old rolls. Um, but some kind of foam tape will give you a little bit of dimension on your cards. Um, not necessary and it can add, and to note, it, adding uh, dimensional, making your cards thicker can mean that they then have to be hand stamped at the um, at the post office and can result in um, a need for even more postage, possibly. It depends on how thick you make it. I typically, it was just with one layer, I usually don't have a problem and don't have to add extra postage, but that is something to keep in mind. Okay, the one last thing some people would might need is for the dies themselves just to begin using them. They come to you all connected and we need to cut break them apart. Do not use regular scissors for this. You need to use like wire cutters or plier, something that you can get in there and break these apart. Okay. So you have to raid your toolbox to get them apart. It's just this first, first time. There we go. Okay. And we are ready to start crafting. Okay. So we want to cut these guys out. Now in order to use the sidekick, a couple things to note. Whatever you're cutting has to fit on this this cutting pad. They are going to get marred like this. That's what they're for. You can buy replacements eventually, but you can get a good five to ten thousand cuts. Yeah, it depends on how on what you're putting through here. But this these will last you a very long time. This will last you a very long time. But eventually, you have to buy replacements, and they come in a two pack. Um, but what you're going to cut has to fit on one of these. So obviously this paper is too big, it's not gonna fit in the machine. So we're just going to use our scissors or your paper trimmer, and we're just gonna trim these to a easier size. So I'm just gonna, let me cut a couple of these down, okay? So this is the one with the little um, gnome that is decorating, so that's gonna be this guy. And see how he's just going to fit right over the top. You just manipulate the die to fill the little puzzle. You know you have it right when you have just a little bit of white outline all the way around the inside of that metal die. 
before you begin using this guy, have a clean surface. You don't have to have a glass mat. You can be doing it just directly on your, your countertop or your table. And um, decide if you're left or, well, you should know if you're left or right-handed, but you can put it whichever way is going to be comf comfortable for you to hold the handle. And then this lever right here will suction down this rubber foot and hold your little um, sidekick in place. So now I've pressed the lever down and now it's stuck tight. I can lift up, up, up my whole mat with it. It is not going to shift on me at all. And that is such a handy little um, feature of this guy. Because otherwise he's just kind of loosey-goosey and he's, he's hard to control. So you can keep him nice and flat and secure. Okay, let's start cutting. Now if you feel more comfortable, you certainly could, could cut these apart and just do one just put one through at a time, but I just wanted to show you, all you need to do is have your whole piece of paper narrower than what can fit through here or fit on here. All right, so we just position this guy. I'm gonna put the mat, the cutting mat, the paper I wanna cut pretty side up and then the die cut ridge side down. Ridge side is the cut side. So just move it around on the paper until you kind of fill this in and you'll kind of get the hang of the, of cutting these out because we're going to cut out several of the same shape. Um, this particular die on, well, on this, on this paper, you can see the little string on his garland and on his mustache. Oh, he's got bows on his mustache. Those kind of, to me, are really good indicators for this particular die. Like that's where I'm looking, especially right here to see if I've got him lined up well. Okay, and then you lay on the second part of the cutting pad. So we're essentially sandwiching all of that together. So we have plate, paper, die, second plate. Feed it through until you have, until your handle starts to move. And that's your resistance and knowing that it's, it's all set in there. And then you just crank the handle. That cracking noise is perfectly normal. That's cracking into the plastic. That's what it's for. The pr There's a little roller in here and the pressure is squeezing that die onto that paper and cutting out your shape. So then you can continue that with the next one that's the same shape. Line him up. Now some people, I didn't mention this is another optional, um, item you might want to use, but some people like to use washi tape or you could use a regular scotch tape. And what that does, the reason we like washi tape in particular is because it's fairly low tack. If you're going to use scotch tape and even with washi, just bring your sleeve over here and put a put the tape on there and pounce it off a little, a couple times. If you're using scotch tape, you have to do it several times, but we just want to get a little fine layer of lint on your tape. And that it, the reason why, is that will help ensure that you have, um, uh, you're not gonna have it be so sticky that you can't, re that you're gonna ruin the paper underneath. So it's just extra security to keep that die right where it's at and then roll through. And we can reuse that piece of die sometimes, multiple times, or piece of tape, I'm sorry. Just carefully push away the die cut from the tape and then you have your cute little die cut guy. So what we want to do is go ahead and cut away all of these little guys, free them from the paper. Just make sure when you're cutting it out that you're leaving enough room around them they, because when you cut them out they are going to have just a teeny tiny little white halo all the way around them. So this is plenty, this is more than enough. You just wouldn't want to cut like right next to their, their shape. And, uh, and besides, that's what the die's for, right? We're just getting it out of the paper. So cut all these guys out. Now this particular paper has a couple of bonus pieces in it. You may have seen those. There's the circles. 
and some little rectangles that have greetings on them. So like from our gnome to yours. Um, and then we've got you better not pout and you are naughty nice. So those are some bonuses. We don't have die cuts for those in this kit, but you can trim those out with your scissors and use those as greetings on tags or in your card making that we're going to do today. So those are just some bonuses. A couple bonus things. I want to get a couple of these Santas. And now that you have, now that you own the sidekick tool, especially if this is your first die cut tool, um, you have a whole new world of opportunity um, of creative endeavors in your future. If you got this, you got the little kit, so you already have like a cute little stamp set and embossing folders and dies that you can play with too, that are sort of everyday style. And there are so many die cuts, y'all, that you can fit through here. And almost every kind of stamp that is, almost every kind of stamp that comes out, I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas. Here's another one. It's actually part of the same collection. Look at these cute little sweater stamps that you could stamp in maybe black ink onto some white paper and then you can color them however you want and then you can get the coordinating die cuts that go with. You just want to make sure that your the, the die cut you want to use is going to be smaller than your plate. Okay. As long as, so like this one is good. All of these are going to fit. So this will be one that you can use in here. Okay. So like this one I cut a little large. It's not going to fit through my, my sidekick. So I just need to trim off the excess like that. Now I know he'll fit. Okay. So I wanted to go ahead and die cut a couple of the other, the other shapes just so you see how they work. So I'll set the decorating gnome aside and let's do the one with the antlers. He is adorable. So put that tape on your sleeve and just pounce it off a few times to get, like you just store it right there when you're not using it. Okay, for this one, the candy cane definitely stands out and the antlers. So those are going to help you kind of fidget the die around and get it perfectly placed. And then you can put your linty tape <laughs> over the top and run it through. Die cutting is so fun and it's there's always new dies. There's there's dies for every occasion. Look at how beautifully that die cut. It's so professional looking. It's very beautifully colored. And this is going to become like the feature element on our cards. So we got a reindeer guy. Let's do a Santa as well. And I'm going to reuse this tape. Just don't lose your die cuts. Santa's a little trickier because he is so he has so many white elements that it all it just fades into the background. So let's see. Let's see where is a good. Okay, the corner of his coat right here, that is definitely a good area to help you oh, get this all aligned. And also, I'm seeing that the swoop of the top of his hat also is very helpful, because you can't really see. There's no, you can't see the outline of his mustache or his hat or the list here that he's holding, but you can see the rest. And that's going to help you get it all nice and aligned like so okay i'll put some tape on him now pouncing off that tape is going to be very important if you're going to use tape because if you don't and you use too sticky of a tape when you go to remove because remember it's getting pressed pressed together and you're as, so it's everything plus the tape and so if your tape is too sticky when you go to try to remove your paper from the die cut, the, the, if your tape is too sticky, you could tear this or mar it or take some of the color away. So be careful with that. Look at the Santa. <gasps> he is so cute. Okay. Well, let's do another Santa and then just go ahead and get all of these little guys die cut. 
Okay, so I've, this has just been so much fun. I am cooking through these really quickly. Look at all these guys. It's like a little, cute little assembly line. I'm like my own little elf factory here. <laughs> and this has just been... I mean, these guys are so cute. I cannot wait to start making cards with them. But I think you could also put them in scrapbooks or on tags or um, planners. Uh, I think that they themselves could be cute little tags because you could put your like little, you could punch a little hole here, put a little, you know, cute ribbon through there and do two from on the back. That itself would be really cute. So many, so many options. Oh, she is cute with a pink hat. We have all our little characters, so I'm just gonna make a cute little pile of those guys. Now it's time to play with the paper. And for this, we're gonna need our paper trimmer as well. But let's look through the, the paper pad itself. So there's 24 sheets in here. And each of them are, the actual printed portion that you'll be using is six inches by six inches. We have an extra little half inch up here. That's where the hole is drilled. So you don't have to worry about that. You're not gonna be using that portion of the paper. But let's look through here. This one is gonna be really cute. We cut this apart and we can use it for um, the main cover of our, the main portion of our card if we want. We can use these strips. If we don't like these strips, we can make our own strips out of the other side of the papers. And if you, this is really fun and colorful. Look how cute this is gonna be with one of these guys on it. We can add a layer, we can put the pink and then have a little pink here. So we have some relief in it from our busy paper and then the pink and then this guy. So many options. And the great thing is no matter what paper you choose, it's meant to go with this. They are designed to go together. So you cannot mess up. You know it's gonna look good, it's gonna be coordinated. So let's go ahead and start tearing out a few of these sheets of paper. Just tear out a good, you know, about 10 of them or so, whatever ones you like, like I really like that side. You can flip through here and see which ones you like. I would look for the cut apart pages because we're definitely gonna wanna consider using those in our cards. I, oh, 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 I love these stripes, ooh. And I love this side too. That's really cute. I do like the blue. This elf on a shelf is adorable. Okay, let's start with that much. Okay, and then let's bring in our paper trimmer. Okay, let's start with the pieces that have cut apart. If we, if we think we want to use them, let's go ahead and cut those apart. And I'm just going to trim off the top portion of that and I'm gonna cut those stripes out of the way I'll go ahead and cut those apart and then I'll have two borders that I may or may not use as they appear so I'm gonna put all these that I pre did away and this is gonna be all my different papers okay and let's cut this part too so these two pieces right here, each of these can be on their own card and be like the main portion of the card. So those cut parts I'm gonna put there because they, they kind of represent a lot of real estate on the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of those kind of papers trimmed. And I may or may not use them, we'll see. We'll see what I like, what I do. You know, this is, this is really your own cards. You get to do it however you want. And if you have an element like this one, let's say, maybe you really love the sweater, but you don't like the lime green background. That's where your scissors are going to come in handy and you can actually fussy cut that right out if you want to. I love how bright and colorful this is. This is so cute. So I got two more borders. Let's see, were there any others like that? I think I remember a pink one somewhere. We have another one of those. Here it is, the Holly Jolly. 
And from here, we're just going to go ahead and continue trimming. Uh, cut the pieces and parts that you like of the paper. I love the idea of using 6x6 six six paper pads for, for projects like this because they're so versatile. And really think about it, you could do this with any kind of 6x6. Six six. Almost every collection comes in this size. And you just get a little bit of every paper. It's, it's perfect. It's ideal. Great for card makers. And I'm going to use some cards where the majority of, where I'm not even going to use any of the cut parts. It's just going to be some of this paper. And I'll just design my own pieces, and then these guys will just kind of sit on top of some of them. All right, now our main card is what they call an A2 size. And that references this measurement when it's all closed up, A2, which is five and a half inches wide and four and a quarter inches tall, or you know, your card can also go this way. So we'll make some cards portrait and some landscape. So just to get a feel, let's take one of our pre-cut ones and lay it on top of here. Gosh, I just really love how the craft color complements the, the brightness of these papers. It just really allows them to shine. The colors just really pop out, even if you're using white. See how that's gonna really, this is, look how cute that looks. Okay, so certainly, if you want to, you could simply slap this on the card and call it done. I'm thinking I would probably throw one of these guys on there, maybe with a pop dot. Maybe we add some other paper. Maybe it goes this direction, and he can be over here on another piece of paper. So knowing that our card is five and a half this way and four and a quarter this way, if we cut just a little bit smaller, we'll have the cute craft border that complements the card itself. So let's see if I like any of these papers. I really think this one's super cute. I'm going to cut this. So this way, I'm going to make my card this direction. So I'm going to cut this way. I'm going to cut it five and a quarter. You can do this with any paper. If you choose one that is directional, like this one, I want my cards to be right side up in my trees. Um, I'm just paying attention to that as I cut it. And then we'll cut it to four inches this direction. Let's save our scrap because I might use that. Okay, so this is going to be my scrap pile. This is my cut pile. So this should fit over the front of our card and give us a nice even border all the way around. Yes, isn't that cute? And now this guy, I can put him like right in there. I think it, the little pink cars in there kind of complement. This is fine by itself, or I can add a little cute guy, and that would be my card. That is super cute. Now, if you're like, okay, I like that, but I'm not ready to commit to gluing it down, let's just set this aside and we can glue it later. Like, this is kind of my card idea, and then we'll, we'll, let's make another one. Grab another card. This time, let's do one portrait style. And let's do one without one of these, without one of these, but maybe with some of these. So what do we have? We've got the holly, the stripes. Of course, we have the backsides too of all of these. I like the pink backside a little better. I like that one. Ooh, the polka dots are cute though. Goodness. Okay, let's do something super Christmassy and traditional. So that's gonna leave me with those three. Now these are longer and bigger than my card is. So I'm gonna have to trim these a little shorter. We could sort of do stripes like this. We could bunch them up and I can add another bit, maybe even trim this one. That's an option. But I think we will make cute little flags out of these. So this is where I'm gonna use my scissors. And to make a little flag or a banner shape, what I'm gonna do is cut right down the middle. I'm just eyeballing between this corner and this corner. So I'm just gonna snip maybe a half inch or so. And then I'm going to line up my scissors and cut from this corner to the top of where I stopped cutting, middle and then repeat on this side. And that's going to give me a fairly even little banner shape. So let's do that on all three of these guys. I, know. I think I like something about like that. And then I'll probably put one of these guys on here somewhere. 
like that. So you could turn this over and mark with a pencil if you want. Um, the size doesn't matter a whole lot, but I do want the, cut, the top line to be cut straight. So what I'm gonna do is just fold these over so I have a little crimp in my paper. And then I'll know where to trim. I'm really loving, I'm really attracted to this paper right here. I love it a lot. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's, obviously it's the color, it's how colorful it is, but also the diagonal stripes I'm such a sucker for. So I'm trimming that to four to five and a quarter. Four inches by five and a quarter. And that's gonna give me a really pretty paper that I can lay down like that. Oh, look at this one with this little cut apart. That's cute. Now that he gets a little bit lost on there, there's a lot going on. So maybe I want a little bit of a of a place for him to land. Take this blue paper and he could be sitting on top of the blue so I can cut myself a little border out of the blue. And he stands out really cute on the blue, I think. So I'm going to trim this to be we want to go with the same width as this, so that's four inches. And then I think, let's see how tall is he. So three inches is going to give him a lot of room. Two and a quarter. Two and a half is about as small as I could go. I'm going to go two and three quarters. Two and three quarters by four. That is so cute. So you can see how you just kind of play with the paper and cut it and hang on to your hang on to your scraps that are a little bit larger because you can see how they come into they come in handy. Now, if this bothers you, the idea of having that much paper covered up. You could trim a teeny little strip and a teeny little strip and glue them on the ends too so that you're not wasting all this paper in the middle. That's certainly your prerogative. You could definitely do that. Now, once you have a few design, few layouts finished, you can go ahead and glue them together or you can just keep going, but you could take this same idea and replicate the general premise of how you cut this with different cards. Let me show you what I mean. So we'll save this one right here. Let's get another card base. Okay, so let's pick another background. Let's do a Christmassy one. Ooh, I love the holly. Let's do the holly side. So our big base piece is four inches wide by five and a quarter. That gives us a quarter inch all the way around. Okay, so this would be the same as the stripes over here. And then I want two strips that go this way. I really like the candy cane. I wonder if there's enough room on there for me to trim it. Let's see if I trim, because I accidentally tore it a little bit. No, but my paper pack has more of it. you get multiple of the same paper so I could go back and find another one and cut her out a little bit and tear it out a little more easily okay so I want the bottom where my this is before I, where on this one I have the gold so that was three inches and then we're f um, four inches across So that's going to be here. And then I need, I want a solid color to go on top of that. What about that red? It's not quite as wide, but I could do that. It would just be a little narrower. I'm just checking my scrap pile first before I cut another paper. I feel like it needs to be a fairly solid design or color. 
The green polka dot might work by two and three quarters. So this is the exact same measurements as my colorful one, but we've just completely changed the entire look because we used completely different colors. Oh, look at how Christmassy and festive this one is. This is so cute. So this one's definitely getting a Santa. There we go. So see, I didn't really have to reinvent the wheel. I'm just using this all the supplies in this little paper pack and these die cut guys. And look at how I have two very different looking cards, but I didn't have to think about the, all the measurements and stuff on this one. I could even have this one be up here and this one be down here. Okay. Okay, time to glue. Let's do this one with some liquid glue so I can show you how I like to use it. Okay, if you typically have trouble with glue, liquid glue, it's probably because you're holding it like this and putting on a bead like that. So I was never actually, so above the paper, no, 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 that's way too much adhesive. What you need to do is hold it touching the paper, touch the paper and drag it along and don't go anywhere near the edges because the glue is going to squish. So you just need a little bit. And then what I, one of the reasons I like liquid glue, because you have room to get this paper straight, as opposed to using a permanent adhesive like score tape or a tape runner, it, if you put it down as crooked, lifting it back up is a big risk to ripping the paper. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this guy this way. And now, see how little glue I used? gets better that way. Now for my little, this is actually super cute as is, but I do want to add a little colorful elf. Now you could glue this flat, but I'm going to pop dot this guy. So I'm just going to use some of these dimensional foam dots. It doesn't add a ton of height, but it just gives you a little bit more dimension. Now you don't have to use a whole bunch. This is plenty right here to hold these guys down. And then you're just going to remove the extra paper and that's going to give just a little bit of height and dimension. And now it has a little bit of a shadow. See the shadow on the antlers. That is so cute. So cute. At the end, I'd probably add some stickles. Now, if you're going to do assembly line um, cards, what I would do is glue, get all the glue and get all your cards assembled before you go through and do add the stickle stuff. Okay. So this one was really cute where we just kind of, just a fun way to use pattern paper. So let's do a different kind of adhesive to show you something, another option. So tape runner. When using a tape runner, hold it steady and roll slowly, pushing down. And when you want to stop, make a check mark move and that will break the tape cleanly. Can you see where it broke? Give you a clean break on your adhesive. Now this one, I need the adhesive to go all the way to the top. And then stick, because I wanted that right at the top of the card and then stick that down. So it's definitely, there's not going to be, it's not going to be gooey. It's not going to be messy. And as long as you remember to roll steady, slow, and make a check mark move when you want to stop, your tape runner will stay clean and nice for you. What I mean is some people do like this. I see what happened. It all like strung up and gummed up here. And that same thing will happen on your runner. So I have a little goober right there. And over time that will build up, build up, build up. This will fold on itself. This will just become a big mess and you're wasting so much adhesive that way. So that's why you should do the check mark move. I love this glue stick. It's great for paper, but it's good for so many other things sticks. It's, it's like a workhorse of a glue stick. It works on photos, wood, burlap, glass, chipboard, 
and it is it is very permanent it's not going to come up but you do have time to move it around and get it straight and where you want your paper you have time to manipulate it not a lot of time but some time <laughs> and then press and really rub it in and then we were going to do this gold color next I like it way down here with just a little bit of these stripes showing at the bottom. And you can keep going with all, we still have all these little die cuts we haven't used yet. We still have these that we haven't used that we can cut apart and use if we want to. Um, and then all these as well and put all your cards together and then what I suggest is you save this for the end is glitter glue glitter glue is just that glitter and glue together in one little bottle and it has this, this little um, applicator tip and same thing with like the liquid glue it's better to not make a bead it's better to hold the tip directly onto the area that you want to color. So I want to make all of these little colorful baubles on his garland to be glittery. So I'm going to squeeze out a little bit from my bottle. And then I have a, almost like a little droplet on there. I'm going to stop squeezing and use the tip to move the glitter around to fill in that space. So then I'm just going to repeat that on all of the little baubles. Stop squeezing and move it around. Adding the crystal stickle glitter glue is just a really fun way to add a little sparkle and pizzazz to your cards. Um, the, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, I'm going to just kind of hit the highlights uh, here, like just doing the candy cane only. On Santa, I think I'll just do the palm on his hat and maybe the cuffs on his sleeves. You can choose to do a lot more than that if you want to. Just know that the, the, the thicker you apply it and the more places you apply it, the longer it'll take to dry. It Depending on how long on, on how much stuff you use, it could be um, 10 minutes, it could be several hours. It just depends on how thickly you apply it. Like here on this card, it'd be cute to put on little berries in the holly as well. Okay, um, let's go ahead and, and throw out a few new uh, card designs. I'm just using some of that scrap paper there, looking for papers that I like, how they coordinate, and trimming them. Most of the paper trimmings I'm doing are going to be four inches, and I'm looking to cover the majority of the card surface. And five and a quarter by four inches is the common sizes. Here, I'm to use up the scrap, it was a little bit shy. I used another little border strip and tore it for a little bit of texture and that's really cute. You can glue things flat like this one. You don't have to use foam tape and really you can see how fast and easy these are coming together. It's because all the papers coordinate, all the die cuts coordinate. Look at here how I'm using these strips of paper that are really just scraps and making a really cute striped design. I took this um, concept. I got this from the ugly sweater concept where you're just kind of a lot of scraps put together. <laughs> a lot of different patterns and colors and it looks really cute and colorful. I like it. And you see how they all just sort of coordinate. I just have a hard time choosing which cute little gnome I want to put on which, on which card. A little glitter glue. Look at the snowy background and on this one I said I'm going to do all three kind of like a little uh, the three wise men, if you will. And I'm going to give Santa a pop dot. So he's kind of the center stage there. That's really cute. A little glitter glue on each of them. And I really did want to use this ugly sweater on at least one card. And um, the patterns of the little ugly sweaters are so cute, but a little overwhelming. So I'm just going to use part of it on one card. So just have so much fun with this. Play with it. Cut out your own designs. You save all your scraps. I couldn't believe how often I went back to my scrap pile to add another element to my cards. So really easy and fun. Um, I hope you enjoy making cards as much as I did. And you know, you're not limited to Christmas. You can do this kind of thing all year long. There's always six by six papers out there. 
and they are just ideal for the card maker. The other reason why they're ideal is the designs, the patterns are shrunk down in a six by six book so that they um, are, are, you know, it's just a little smaller print, not overwhelming to the small size or scale of a card. Really fun. Look at the stickles. I mean, just, they just add so much. Look at that. The stickles will dry flat. Candy cane paper was adorable. This is just a, a really fun afternoon <laughs> of crafting. Um, and uh, if you bought the project box kit, and you're going to have that sidekick to play with uh, for the rest of your crafting career. And it's, you're just going to have so much fun with it. On this one, I use the striped paper, which I love. And just using it in small doses sometimes is um, nice because it can be a little overwhelming, the pattern. And I cut, I cut it a little narrower, so I have that long, skinny, narrow strip there. And I end up saving that and using it on, on the inside of the card. And I wanted to point that out because all these scraps you could use to decorate the inside of your cards as well. Okay, and here comes that little skinny strip of, of paper just to decorate the inside. So definitely you can use some of your scraps and or embellishments to finish decorating. And then you're just going to use a pen um, to write your messages on the inside. Don't forget to sign the back of your cards and date them. You made them. You you should take credit for them. Um, so cute. Your, fa your family, friends are just going to love receiving these from you. And look at all the extra cards we still have. Lots of paper is left in the 6x6 book. You can finish making all the cards and still have plenty left over. you got the sidekick left to play with. You're still going to have extra, your extra die cuts and papers to play with. You still own your dies. You can always get another sheet of those die cut paper um, gnomes um, and the stickles. And then we have all of our finished cards. Uh, you go ahead and pause this if you want to have a little look at a, you know, a stopped look at any of these finished cards. Oh, I love the elf on the shelf. He was so cute. I, I hope that you make some of your own designs and just had a lot of fun with crafting with me today. This was so cute. I have a hard time deciding my favorite one. They're just all so fun. I just love how the six by six pad just helps you. You just know it's all going to work. It's just, it's, you it just takes the pressure off and you can just have fun. <laughs> and don't forget, you got that sidekick tool now, so you get to play with that and, and it continue creating. It's a fun thing to share. Send cards all year round. I think that this one is my favorite. Holly, holly, jolly, jolly. Mm -hmm.